Today on Monkey Life, baby orangutan Hujan arrives from Germany to start a new life at the park. All right, freedom, little buddy. Hi. Alison makes a vow after a chimp she and Jim first tried to rescue from a circus in Thailand 15 years ago resurfaces. I'm going to do everything I can to get that chimp out of there. And always over my shoulder will be Jim. And Hananya's group try camellia flowers for the first time. But they're not a hit with everyone. <laughs> Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Everybody's well aware that they need to be looked after carefully. The park provides a home for more than 260 monkeys and apes from 24 different species. It's a busy and exciting morning for the park's orangutan team. They're prepping a bedroom ready for the arrival of Hujan, a 21-month-old youngster from Krefeld Zoo in Germany. The team are highly experienced at looking after baby orangutans, but the plans for this little male are slightly different. Hujan would be the eighth orphan from Europe that we would have received into the orangutan nursery, but right now, we're a little bit full over there because we've got both Jin and Sylvester, who are just turning into beautiful sort of adult men now. And so we need to find a new home for them to stack another little boy in there. I'm worried that it might start building tension in there. So what we're gonna try and do is actually introduce Hujan into Tuan's group. Hujan was rejected by his mum and hand reared by staff at Krefeld but he has spent time in the company of adult orangutans, so the team are hoping that this group will be a perfect fit. It's led by Tuan, who, at probably more than 35 years of age, is the oldest orangutan at the park. He's a great father figure and wonderfully playful with the youngsters. Hujan will also have three adult females to mother him. Roro, Lucky, and Ame. Plus, there's a possible playmate in five-year-old Awan. While the team continue their final preparations at the park, over in Germany, it's been an early start and it's going to be a very long day for little Hujan. Primate carer James from Monkey World has spent the last two days getting to know him and establishing a bond. With the help of Hujan's keeper, Ava, he's now putting the finishing touches to the travel box. So, so think, one think, is enough for... I think yeah. so. It would always take my coat off for him. <laughs> <laughs> so, put his food inside. Okay. When the team arrived from Monkey World, the box was placed inside Hujan's bedroom, giving him time to get used to getting in and out of it. So... To entice him in, Ava offers him a bottle of milk, which he happily takes. Oh, boy. And down. Right. That was easy. <laughs> Good job, Eva. Yes. Wonderful. Ah. Ah, he's eating now. Cool. So, Brilliant. it's very cool. The planning and training has paid off. That's gone brilliantly. Um, he's very, very relaxed in the crate, um, eating and drinking in there as soon as we put him in. So all the training with him is worth it. Um, really good job. Really pleased. Hand off. Oh, 12 kilos. <laughs> Hujan seems happy and relaxed as he's loaded into the van. Ava will be coming back to the UK with them to help to keep the youngster calm and settled during the journey. Okay. 
everything is ready. Oh, happy? Yes. Ahead of them is a 450 mile drive back to Dorset, where there'll be an excited team waiting to welcome the new arrival. Monkey World was set up by Jim Cronin in 1987 to rescue and rehabilitate primates from all around the world. Since the original group of nine chimps arrived, the park has grown to accommodate more than 260 individuals. But the fate of one chimp she and Jim couldn't help has been a constant concern for Alison. Circumstances beyond their control meant they lost track of her until now. It's very exciting. After 15 years of searching for a chimpanzee called Nari that Jim and I found all of those years ago, I finally got the thumbs up and I think we're gonna be able to bring her back to the park. Cannot even believe it. Back in 2003, Alison and Jim were conducting an undercover operation in Thailand, trying to track down illegal smugglers of primates in Southeast Asia. There, they came across a young chimp being forced to perform in a circus at a Thai amusement park. Jim and Alison were shocked by what they witnessed. I don't know. I mean, maybe some people appreciate seeing animals do silly circus tricks, but it just, all I could do was sit there and think, what is the matter with that chimpanzee? Does she need medical care now? What can we do to help? And at the end of the show, I remember going up to the side of the ring and making chimp noises at her, and she came running over. And that was my first point of contact with Nari. So life was grim. Um, a lot of animals die in circumstances like that, especially having been smuggled from the wild. So um, it's a testament to Nari's sort of strength that she survived all of that. Um, if there were ever a chimp that deserved getting a family back again, it's Nari. Most of Nari's teeth had been knocked out leaving her with only four molars and deforming her face. Jim and Alison were so shocked at her physical condition, they decided there and then to make it their mission to bring her back to Monkey World. They publicized her plight, and Nari's story made it onto local TV and radio stations in the UK. People are really, they want, they want some answers. They want to know what's happening. And luckily, the paper's been following it up as well. So it's been a massive response. Everybody really cares and wants to know What's going to happen? And thousands wrote letters and emails pleading for Nari to be rescued. Nari was confiscated from the amusement park, but then very quickly, just as quickly, she was made to disappear. Um, and we couldn't get from any of the authorities in Thailand where she had been, who had taken her, where she had been taken, what had happened to her. She was simply gone. For 15 years, Alison heard nothing, despite constantly contacting the Thai authorities. Then she got a phone call about a female chimp being looked after at a rescue centre south of Bangkok. It sounded remarkably like Nari. Alison got on a plane. I can confirm Nari is alive and well. She's living at a government rescue centre in Thailand, quite a ways outside of Bangkok. She's fit and healthy. She's like a little tank. She's lovely as she was from the day that Jim and I met her. Really kind. I got a big welcome hello and straight over to the side of the cage, itching for attention. Great to see that the people who are caring for her really do care for her. Her keeper is going to be devastated. She has one man who looks after her, who's her main keeper, because everybody else is a bit frightened of her, and he loves her to bits. So that's been a good and a steady source of companionship for Nari when she's been at the center, um, because otherwise she's living in a big metal cage all on her own. So there's not a whole lot going on to keep Nari busy and active. Now, after months of negotiations and correspondence with authorities in both Thailand and the UK, 
it looks as if Nari could be on her way to Monkey World. I'm cautiously optimistic that I'll manage to get this sorted, but at the same time, we're gonna have a lot of hurdles to overcome in order to make sure that all governments, both in Thailand and here um, in Britain and within Europe are happy that this chimpanzee needs to be moved to be given a family of her own kind again. So everybody's on board. Nari's got everybody's hearts in, in her hands now, and, and I think it's gonna work. I think we'll get her back to the park. It's the culmination of a dream for Alison. I'm gonna do everything I can to get that chimp out of there. And always over my shoulder will be chimp. Springtime at the park, and there's an abundance of flowers in bloom, including fresh camellias still on their stems. It might not appear an obvious snack for a group of chimps, but it's the type of treat they might forage for in the wild. Primate care worker Wendy is spreading the flowers around, making the chimps' enclosure look very colourful. Anybody who thinks it's Valentine's Day, so we're going to give them flowers. It's not, of course. It's way past. We've been taking a little bit of extra time to do this, so the guys are getting a bit excited. So let's see their reaction when they come out. The flowers are a first for Hanania's group of 18 chimps. In the wild, the primate's natural diet is pretty opportunistic. They eat seeds, nuts, leaves, fruit, and even eggs and meat. These flowers are brightly colored with a strong scent, so they should catch everyone's attention. The group are let out, and surprisingly, it's low-ranking Cookie leading the way. But she wisely leaves first pickings to the higher rankers following behind. Second in command, Simon is the first chimp to try out the camellias. Seems they may be an acquired taste. Johnny thinks so too. As a high-ranking female, she's duty-bound to give them a try. But she's not exactly wolfing them down. Thelma doesn't know what to make of all the flowers scattered in front of her. And Marjolaine decides the taste isn't to her liking either. Leader of the group, Hananya, opts for a more common breakfast item, a piece of courgette instead. With so many leftovers, after a final check to make sure the high rankers are busy, Kiki decides to tuck into a tasty bloom while an observant Thelma watches on. Eventually, the group cotton on to the fact that camellia flowers are pretty tasty after all. With the females leading the way. Johnny and Thelma's mum, Cherry, look as if they're catching up on the gossip over breakfast. Thelma tucks in too. But then, with such a doting family, life for this little chimp is always a bed of roses. It's a worrying time over at the Gibbon complex. For some time now, the condition of 20-year-old La Gibbon, Kitty, has been deteriorating. She's lost a lot of weight, and although the vet ran a number of medical tests a few months ago, the results were inconclusive. Unfortunately, they haven't actually given us a, a, a diagnosis of what's going wrong with her. Um, so we have to give her another sedation today um, to try and get some, some more ideas. Um, we want to do some more blood tests and ultrasounds um, to try and get some answers. Kitty has lost a lot of body hair and is no longer the magnificent, fluffy black gibbon she was a couple of years ago. The hair on her back has turned silvery white. Yeah. Vet Dave Harding has been called in to take another look at her, this time using an ultrasound, in the hope of getting to the bottom of her condition. Any preference? Uh, no, but can I have a, a bigger syringe? 
Anesthetizing Kitty again was not an easy decision. On the last occasion, her heart stopped and it was touch and go whether she would pull through. She did crash. Um, she crashed hard and fast. Um, so obviously that is a major concern for us today. You know, this has been a difficult decision to go ahead and do this today. Um, but really we kind of have to, to try and find if we can actually fix her. Kat administers the anaesthetic. As soon as she's sedated, Kitty is taken to the Parks Hospital. Once she's safely intubated and Dave is happy her vital signs are all good, he can proceed with the examination. He starts with an ultrasound. The lights are dimmed so he can get a good, clear picture of Kitty's vital organs. Right, is this the liver? Yep and check there are no abnormalities. Heart on the other side. Terrifyingly slow. Or anything sinister, which may be the cause of her condition. Is there anything obvious, I'm afraid? There's nothing, there's nothing there that's hugely terrifying. I can't see any masses or anything in there, um, which is good. Dave takes a closer look at Kitty's heart. There seems to be a bit of irregularity around here. Um, it's hard to tie that in with the symptoms that she's showing. I don't have any answers, really, based on that. With the ultrasound complete, Dave now wants to take a series of X-rays so he can compare them with those taken three months ago. We can see if anything is worsening, but um, I just want to get another X-ray really to see the lungs um, and any skeletal structures that might be giving us any further clues. But um, yeah, at the minute I'm not quite sure, I'm afraid. A study of the day's X-ray reveals that nothing has changed. Nothing dramatic. I couldn't see anything on the last one. I can't see anything on these ones. A number of blood samples are taken for tests to cover all bases. Right, let me just see if I can get some urine, all right? Finally, Dave takes a urine sample directly from the bladder to avoid any chance of cross-contamination. He uses the ultrasound as a visual guide. OK, so wake her up. With the tests and examination complete, Kitty is slowly brought around from the anaesthetic. I can't see anything to obviously explain her symptoms. Um, we can't image everywhere. I mean, it'd be nice to have an MRI scan to look at her brain as well. Uh, but I, you know, there's nothing dreadful going on. I think you have to look at the positives. And, and I think that you know, we were half expecting to find some sort of growth inside her. Um, and we, we don't see that, so. Kitty is returned to her bedroom to recover. It's still a worrying and frustrating situation. And all they can do is wait for the results of the tests before deciding the next course of action. Following an early start and a 450 mile journey from Krefeld Zoo in Germany, Hujan has arrived at the park in Dorset. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Alison and an excited team are waiting to greet him. Hey, squeaky man. He was so relaxed during the drive. It's funny, in some of the photos he looks a little bit bigger, and then in others he looks like a baby. He's quite small. Yeah. They're keen to get him out of his travel box and into his bedroom as soon as possible. Welcome, welcome. This is Hujan room. Hujan won't be introduced to his new group just yet. The team have purposely put him in the end bedroom, so he can't be stared at by the other orangutans. This way he gets to smell, hear and glimpse the others without being overwhelmed. Go ahead. Good boy. Intrigued, little Awan tries to get a look at her new playmate. All right, freedom, little buddy. Hi. A slightly cautious Hujan takes his time. Oh, that's good. What's your loss, huh? There's a lot to take in, 
but with encouragement from his German keeper, Ava, and his new best friend, James, it doesn't take long for him to start exploring his new surroundings. The team are impressed. Fantastic, what a lovely little boy, and so confident, like, straight in there, out of the box, exploring everything. Doesn't need anybody's help, thanks very much. Um, really lovely little boy, so um, I think he's gonna fit in with all of the others really nicely. Just have to get him settled in for tonight, you know, first night here. Um, I think James might stay the night in here with him because we don't wanna begin introductions with any of the others. It's late in the afternoon now, so he'll have his last milk drink, bit of food, we'll begin sort of with a basic meeting with the mesh with Lucky tomorrow. All signs are good. Should be um, a very interesting day tomorrow. Hey. Orangutan team leader Jano is equally captivated and the feeling is mutual. <laughs> you are. So, yes, you are a good climber. Keeping to his routine, Ava prepares Hujan's nighttime bottle, which he always enjoys before bedtime. <laughs> oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Jarno prepares a supper of fruit and veg to entice Hujan into the freshly prepared bedroom where he'll sleep tonight. Come in. Hujan. <laughs> Hujan. It's been a long but satisfying day for all. The next adventure for little Hujan will begin when he starts to meet his new family. Next time on Monkey Life, Vet John touches a nerve carrying out a dental operation on Chimp Buster. Uh, he's getting up. Two and a half, please. And hidden treats prompt an excited response from the normally sedate Stumpies. <laughs> <laughs>